Good morning, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to Southern Virginia. I'm picking up a truck that I purchased on Gov Planet, Iron Planet, government surplus auction site. Uh, I'm gonna take you along with me, show you how I do it. Try to teach you some of the stuff I've learned. This is the fifth or sixth vehicle I've bought off of the online auction. So I've learned a few things, some the hard way, some the good way, and I'll share my experience, show you how to do it. Hope you enjoy. All right, so we're about an hour from where I needed to pick this stuff up. I forgot to mention earlier, I have my daughter with me. Uh, she's an awesome travel buddy. She goes along with me on these adventures sometimes. But I wanna, as I'm double checking, making sure I have everything ready, I wanna show you what you need to have. So sometimes you have to pick up when you buy from this auction at a military base. Sometimes they're from an independent contractor's office. Uh, you just don't know until you call to schedule the pickup. Uh, it's important when you're looking at the item description, make sure you look for things like, are there keys with the vehicle? Uh, are all the tires flat? What are you going to need to actually be able to transport this item home if you're going to pick it up yourself? You also need to bring the item release. Uh, it gets sent to you as soon as you complete payment. You print it out, it looks like this has a picture of what you're buying. It says your name and all your information. That way the people there know that you're the person that's supposed to be getting this item. You also need some kind of government issued photo ID. If it's on a military base, you're gonna need to stop at the visitor center for that base and get a day pass. So they'll actually let you on to go pick it up. Um, Usually the photo ID, the item release are the only things that you need. Sometimes they require a second form of ID. It just depends on where you're going. And that's pretty much it. They'll give you the address, the street address of where you need to pick the item up. Usually there's an office or something. Like I said, if it's on the military base, you need to go to the visitor center first, get your visitor pass, then go to the address to do the pickup. Um, and that's usually, I mean, that's all you need to have. Sometimes they'll require more. Sometimes they, they really don't ask any questions. It's in a field at X address, go get it whenever you can. And, uh, you know, I did my homework on this one. I think I have everything I should need to get it loaded up. So we'll see when we get there. Like I said, we're about an hour away. We stopped to take a little stretch break. I gave my daughter a snack let her walk around a little bit just to stretch her legs. And now we're headed the rest of the way there. All right, guys, so we're here. We got checked in. We're gonna head out back and hopefully get this thing loaded up. I'll show you how everything goes. Yeah, we're here, baby girl. How's it going? Right down there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, let's check this thing out. Okay, so here we are. Hey, hey, Dicko Dicko. What are you doing? You gonna hang out while Daddy gets the truck? All right, so here we go. I got this thing. 
forgot to start recording earlier. But anyway, it's too wide with these huge offset wheels to fit on my trailer. Fortunately, I brought some spares. I'm gonna get these bolted on real quick. All it needs to do is roll onto the trailer, so I'm only putting two lug nuts back on them and just snugging them down by hand. Like I said, it's only got to roll forward a few feet. Do this side. Get them all, all loose. Part of what I was talking about of you know you want to bring and be as prepared as you can I saw from the pictures these wide tires and I thought I don't know if that's gonna fit so I brought my spare rollers just in case it didn't because I'm about four hours from home right now it would have been a serious bummer to not be able to get this thing on the trailer. So, I've always been a pretty solid believer of it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Especially in situations where I already had everything, I just needed to bring it. I'm pretty pumped about this. I think this might be one of the better buys I've gotten on the government auction. I was lucky. It looked like a couple of people had bid in advance, but nobody was actually bidding live at the time of the auction. So once I surpassed what the person had bid ahead of time, which really was well below what I think the value of this truck is, it, uh, it just counted down the clock and it became mine. It's a 2500 Suburban, a 2003, which you don't see these very often. At least I don't, not in my area. It's been uh, militarized. I'm guessing they use this to transport people somewhere. Who knows? Overseas could have been doing anything with it. It's hard to say. But. The nice thing about this the government auction is they send somebody out to check it out ahead of time. They try to start it, which usually, I mean, they literally, they'll put a key in and try to start it. A few of the inspection guys, they'll bring like a booster box to just make sure it's not, it isn't just a dead battery. But a lot of the times, You'll be able to look at that report and they'll say, oh, started after jump starting, but wouldn't restart or wouldn't start at all. But when the military takes something out of service, typically they write the reason why somewhere on the vehicle. And this one is a good example of that because it says right on the back window towed in transmission issues not start which not start like I said for the military can mean anything from dead battery to a catastrophic failure you don't know but most of the time they're low mileage vehicles and they just get driven really hard so, the weak point in most vehicles, at least in my experience in the heavier duty ones, is the transmission. That's the part that takes the abuse of heavy throttle and 
fast acceleration, towing heavy loads. So that's usually the part that fails and everything else is good. Fortunately for me, I know how to rebuild transmissions. So it doesn't bother me to do a little transmission work. I actually really enjoy it. So we'll get these rollers put on the back two wheels and then we'll get this thing winched up on the trailer and make the trip back home. Quick and easy. I'm sure by the time I get this done, my little girl will be sleeping again. A little past her nap time, but she's been a trooper. I love taking her places with me. I'm excited. For as she gets a little older and able to do more and more stuff, I'm sure she'll be out here with me wanting to pump the jack or loosen the lug nuts, whatever the case may be. I'm sure she'll want to be right in the middle of it. I'm excited to teach her all that stuff. But like I was saying, it's a 2500 Suburban. It's got the 8.1 liter engine. Uh, the full floating rear axle with leaf springs. And this is what part of what drew me to this one is I've seen plenty of the the half ton and the three quarter ton Suburbans from this generation of trucks, but I've never seen one with leaf springs in the rear. So I'm not sure if this is just a upgraded heavier duty version that I just happen, haven't happened to see, or if this is one that was, you know, the military ordered 15 or 20,000 of them or something. So GM built them special on a heavier chassis with different suspension or what exactly the deal is. But it's got these 305 70R16 tires. It's about a 33 by 12 and a half inch wide tire that, I mean, they look in great shape. They've got tread left. They're not dry rotted. My intention when I bought this one was to take it apart and sell it in pieces. But depending on one, if I can get it to start up when I get back home and the engine sounds good. And two, if I'm able to get the title for it, I may be able to either sell this one whole or I've been looking for another tow vehicle. Maybe I'll just keep this one for myself. And use it to go pick up the next car, truck, whatever it is that I decide to buy. There we go. So we'll slide this one up on here. Boom. Again, only need, we're, we're only rolling it on the trailer. It's not even gonna be driving on the trailer. I've gotta pull it up on there with my winch. So I'm really not worried about only having two lug nuts per wheel. But geez, you get far enough outside of a big city, you're likely to see somebody driving around on two lug nuts in their everyday vehicle, so. Two per wheel to roll onto a trailer is not risky in my opinion. There we go, get this one jacked up. So I can tell as I tightened the other side and the wheel refused to spin. that the part fall on the transmission is good and there's no broken axle shafts which is always a good thing nice to not find unexpected breakages or damage like i said you really you're taking a gamble when you purchase on the online auction you may get something really good you may get something 
that's really junk. You just gotta look carefully at the pictures, read the description a few times, and kinda decide how much risk you're willing to take and how much risk there really is. Like some of the inspectors are super thorough. Some of the inspectors are very not thorough. So like I said, I think on this one, I got pretty lucky. And you never, geez, I mean, it may have transmission issues because it's low on transmission fluid. May have had transmission issues, said it, they didn't start it. Maybe the batteries were, were dying or dead and it didn't have sufficient, sufficient voltage in the, uh, you know, the nice thing about technology is it makes all of our vehicles operate more efficiently. However, it, it really narrows their operating parameters, their ideal operating range with an electronically tr controlled transmission like this truck has. Like, geez, most vehicles after the early to mid 90s, they all have electronically controlled transmissions, but they can be sensitive to voltage. If your batteries are going bad, your alternator is not able to keep up. This truck has dual batteries in it. And it just might not have been sufficient voltage to operate the shift solenoids in the transmission. You never know. But it's fun to guess. See what it may or may not be. I like when I get them home and I'm able, usually able to get them started and do my inspection. Like I said, it's I bought this with the intention of selling it in parts and pieces, but man, my inspection may show me that I'll be better off to keep this one in one piece as it is. Especially just because it's neat. got it at a price that I really can't lose no matter what I decide to do with it. Jeez, I could probably scrap it and make my money back because I'm sure with the 8.1, the full float rear, it's a big SUV. I mean, yeah, I could probably scrap it for the price I got it for, but that would be an awful waste. You know, like just a demonstration of it was a good buy. I'd have to be super unlucky, unlucky to lose on this one. All right, so let's gather up all these lug nuts. It's not very often I get a vehicle that has all of the lug nuts, and especially all of the lug nuts in good shape. So put these right here in the bed so I don't lose them. Get this tire up in here. Get the last handful of lug nuts and the other tire and the jack and my wrench. I don't want to be the guy that's accidentally donating tools. Tools are too expensive for everybody that's left tools in one of the uh, cars or trucks I've bought from you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's helpful. <laughs> I see a lot of people that are always looking for 10 millimeter sockets. I've got a lifetime supply of 10 millimeter sockets. I have all your 10 millimeters. They were in that truck that you sold or car or whatever the case may be. That's where it was. I appreciate the donation. Get this last wheel loaded up. Find my gloves. I took my gloves off somewhere around here. And put those back on. They're not on the seat. Must have put them in the truck. Find my gloves. Get the ramps out. Get the winch cable rolled out. Whoops. Dad tip when you're traveling with your young kids, 
Throw the dirty diapers in the bed so you don't have to st smell them the whole way of where you're going. Get these put in here so they're not rolling all over the place. Grab my little glove. There they are. Hey, what are you doing? Are you going to take a nap? No? Are you going to take a nap? Yes. Let's take a nap. Oh, get my winch control in here. There we go. Man, I'll give you some advice. If you do any amount of buying used vehicles, whew, get yourself a trailer with a winch. A good winch, not a junk winch. Uh-oh. Oh my god, this guy's got it. Put that CDL to work, brother. Yeah, you can get through there, you got plenty of room. There you go, boss. Get these ramps out. There you go. Nicely done. Boom. Get this whole thing. Let's get that a little. There we go. Free spool. Oh, someone yanked the tow hooks off of this thing. Okay. Well, unfortunately this nice cross member is here. That's not how I like to do it. I definitely don't like hooking onto my winch cable. But, this thing should roll pretty easily. And we can steer it. Oh yeah, geez. She wants to go on the trailer. She can't wait to get on the trailer. Take me to my new home. There we go. We lined up. And we're going to have to come, come towards the driver's side a little bit. But she'll go. Right, keep some tension on the winch cable here. those wheels turn the direction we need to go. Come left a little bit. There we go. Then we'll straighten her out. This part's a little bit of back and forth, but it's not that bad. It's good arm workout. I'm not going to the gym today, but still get some passive exercise in. Oh, see, too aggressive. Now we're too hard towards the driver's side. that yeah there we go see little adjustments little adjustments little adjustments yeah this thing definitely would not have fit with those big wide tires on it See what that does. See, interior in this thing is nice. I bet it's got less than 90,000 miles on it. Sorry, license plate. 
All right, so I find this too. Most winches will appreciate it a lot if you try to wrap your cable nice and evenly. All right, how's our how's our back looking? Oh, we gotta head a little bit towards the passenger side. The back looks good though. It's gonna be hard to turn because we're right on that wheel well. Oh, sorry, license plate. I hear ya. This thing's got a six inch lift on it. I think six or four, it might be four. But it's pretty sweet. Get you just a shade more passenger side. We're gonna have to adjust our lunch cable a little bit here. And boop. There she is. Perfect. Yeah. Should tow nicely. Cable put away here. Oh. See, Jason, try to do stuff fast. Hit that brake line. I'm probably going to be doing a brake line repair now. Probably going to be doing a brake line repair. Sounds like I'm leaning towards fix it up and then it, huh? This thing strapped out. A ratchet binder here. Man, nice thing about this truck being lifted, it'd be easy. Easy to get up and strap it down. I will put it in park. Hmm. Okay. Close the door. I always, I always worry I'm gonna lock the keys inside of something. And look at that, it's even got a remote entry. Super snazzy. Wow, this one had ride control too? Dang. Alright, so. Let's see here. Oh, a Fabtech lift. Nice. Very nice. Yep, it's got a 4L80 trans. Big fuel tank. Okay. I like to chain to the transmission cross member. I've seen Chuck use and abuse. Never seen a transmission cross member. So I'm fairly confident it's not gonna fall out of this one. Through the pocket and over the top. Actually, I think I'm gonna use my rear ratchet. Get this thing pulled away from the front a little bit. Cause she's a little nose heavy. Someone stole one of my hairpins. Gotta get a new one. Of all the things to steal, like a little tenth of a cent hairpin, for real? Come on, wire. There we go. But this worked to get me here. I'll stop it 
Ace Hardware or something. On my way home, I get a new one. Let's get our other ratchet binder here. And our other chain. Shimmy and shake and wiggle yourself up in here. I like to go right around the pinion. Especially on a nice three quarter of one point like this. Like, that differential's not coming out there. And that's a nice heavy duty pinion. That is actually a full floating 14 volt, which is just a massively strong axle. See, there we go. Now we get nice little line. We'll wrap this one. Now I'm going to put it in the pocket. My binders unscrewed. Nice. I'm going to use that binder to shift this thing back just a little bit. And then help balance my load a little better. Pinch comes back easy. Easy peasy. I might even, I might even go a little bit more. She's got that 8.1 in her. Heavy, very heavy. Put it in the part, doesn't roll anywhere, hopefully. Man, if you want a forearm workout, try this. This one I can make just a little bit longer. Well, see, she's ready to go. Ready to go home. A tiny bit more. I'm looking for here is I want about a 65 35 weight split and 
I might need to go one more time. That, that, that engine is so heavy. Let's try that parking brake. Did you notice that that parking brake works? Like. Most people I know is parking brake in their daily driver. Oh, four arms. Oh, so, so tired. Four arms. Especially my left. All right. Let's see if that gets us. Gets us where we want to be. Nice and, nice and tight. Tension. Release the parking brake. Put it in neutral one more time. There we go. Coming back. A little bit more. Tiny bit. That's where I want it. Put her in the park. Key out. Key in bucket. Now we get. This one tight. like I've done this before or something. Now, I want these tight. I don't want this thing shifting around on me. Little more. Now it is unusual for that cross member to be a big frowny face like that. Maybe they were dumping this thing. Who knows? Wrap our chain up. We don't want that going anywhere. We definitely don't want to drag it on the road. Get our jack back in the truck. Because we like our jack. Lug nuts. Okay. Well, yep. Good. Just double check around. Make sure I didn't leave anything sitting anywhere. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're ready to go. Hood's latched. Hood's latched. Okay. You ready to go? Are you ready to go home? Yeah. 
Do you need a diaper? Okay, guys, we are loaded up. Elodie stretched her legs a little bit. Clean diaper, a little snack. And we are headed back home. I will update you along the way or when we get there. All right, here we go. Headed back home. We'll get ourselves a mile or so down the road, go over some bumps, and then we'll stop and make sure our ratchets, ratchets are still tight and everything's good for the trip back. It's about a four hour haul, so don't want anything coming loose. Realized I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, if you are picking something up on a military base, it's very important that you find out if your, your vehicle, your item, whatever it is that you're picking up is in a restricted area ahead of time. If you go on base, you are going to be the only person that can get the visitor pass to go into the restricted area to pick up the whatever it is that you bought. So for example, like I said, I bring my daughter with me a lot she would not be allowed and i know this because i learned from experience she's not allowed to go into the restricted area with me to pick up the the item or the vehicle or whatever it is even though she's a toddler in a car seat and isn't going to get out of the vehicle she's still not allowed into that restricted area so you have to yeah singing songs Woo! so just something to consider if you're going to be bringing anybody with you when you do this make sure you find out when you schedule your pickup is the item or the vehicle in a restricted area do I need to find a babysitter or child care should I not bring my friend or whatever the case may be to make sure that you don't have issues when you get there okay pulling back up to the house Man, it's been a long day. Drove, it was about 250 miles each way, so about 600 miles or 500 miles round trip. But we're finally back home, about to back into the driveway here. And then, uh, fortunately, Elodie's been a super trooper all day long. She's been super patient. It's tough for her being in the truck all day in the car seat. We stopped and took some stretch breaks, but it's still pretty boring for her. So she's been a trooper. And now we're just trying to get this old thing backed up in the driveway. Try not to mess the grass up too much. trailer always drags when I got it loaded up. I got a steep dip at the bottom of my driveway. There we go. And then we just back her right up. It's night time so her bedtime so I'll probably go in spend some time with my wife spend some time with Elodie and then send everybody off to bed hope you enjoyed the video if this was helpful or useful or you learned anything or even if you just like listening to my gibberish or don't give it a like it helps me out lets me know what you do and don't want to see and hear from me and uh, hopefully I'll be able to keep making more helpful videos for you. All things GM trucks. And we will see you next time.